Yeah, please, sir. Okay. All these Good speakers evening, are everyone. on their cameras. Good evening, everyone. I welcome you all to the 100th webinar of ELTA. The journey of our webinar started way back in April 2020, soon after the pandemic struck. And we have been consistently webinar on the last Sunday of every month. So from June onwards, our webinar for teachers, we just have one webinar for teachers and there'll be uh, certain other activities for uh, school and college teachers, uh, students. There would be uh, student activities in the form of competition. It could be quiz, debate, extempore, taking on this reading movement on a very large scale and Dr. Shravan has been running a reading club in his university. And likewise, there are a few more chapters of LTI, which run the reading club activities in their respective institutions. So uh, with your cooperation, we have been able to manage these 100 webinars. This is the 100th one. And today we have with us two creative writers conference. So I thank you both, madam, for accepting this invitation and uh, enlightening our attendees with your experience as creative writers because i'm sure all the attendees who are there i see some 2500 plus registrations for the webinar so that shows that uh, and that will be more in the form of a conversation so we'll be able to uh, get the more uh, the most out of our creative writers so that's uh, briefly about uh, the eltai webinars over to you shravan Thank you, sir. Thank you everyone for watching. Today we welcome you all in 100 times, even a world. In reality, aside from instinctive utterances like the yelp of an injured child or a delighted oh, all expressions are creative. So to understand what is creative, writing and how can we all write creative writing, academic and professional excellence fellowship and went to University of Minnesota as visiting faculty in 2017. Most recently, she has finished her fourth novel and is planning a theoretical production while feeling, it's a quoted thing, while feeling totally oppressed by admin work in her college. Illustrated, illustrated poems to musicals, to novels, and the pictures for children. A scholar of French language and literature, freelance editor, and a writer of fix fiction for children and adults. Currently, she is consulting with a startup children's publisher, writing stories, editing, visualizing, and guiding illustrations and layouts. Without further ado, to both the writers, and Anuradha Ma'am can start the answer uh, how did you begin the journey of creative writing, ma'am? 
Thank you, Shravan, and a uh, very good afternoon to everybody. Um, it's a, a big uh, a privilege to. I'll say that I, I uh, wasn't writing uh, any um, outstanding stuff, but I was writing. I was writing always, scribbling in, uh, uh, you know, notebooks, in diaries, in dog-eared kind of, uh, you know, uh, notebooks. Uh, I was always, always writing and for as long as possible to perpetuate that, uh, you know, that, 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 that world of imagination. And uh, uh, my writing was, in a sense, uh, doing that, uh, you know, perpetuating this world that I found more pleasurable. But and uh, you started your writing with the reading. Uh, Maria, madam, what do you think? Do, did you start your journey of writing with the reading or there was some other technique for writing these I, novels and the playwrights? I think I started uh, my creative uh, imagining. And, and there's a lot of things I want to say about writing in English, but um, I think I, I'll come for later. I started writing in English, although that's not my mother tongue. Well, it's nobody's mother tongue, I think. And we all learn it as a second language. But uh, I started writing by listening, I think, first, before I started reading. Okay. Uh, so, Maria, ma'am, after reading and listening. So, how much of our writing or any writer's writing? process is influenced by our mother tongues, mainly the tempo and the music of the sentence. What do we understand and how do we write uh, or how mother tongue influence affects us? Uh, Anuradha ma'am. Yeah, I think that works both literally and metaphorically in the world we live in, you know, in certain senses, uh, English is, uh, you know, a father tongue, you know, uh, the order. It is. It is in a sense uh, the official language. It is. Uh, sorry. It is. It is. It is. It is uh, Hindi's official language, but uh, uh, English is in that sense um, the, the the mother tongue and the father tongue. So uh, growing up between these two languages, uh, I uh, started to uh, write in English. But the interesting thing that's happened now is that that uh, for my uh, playwriting very very recently i have to, i i just find it so much more satisfying writing in uh, you know uh, playing in hindustani to 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 the audience uh, as far as uh, the, the the fiction fictional world is concerned i'm very content to uh, live in english um, and i suppose because uh, uh, it's ELTI, uh, to all of you are language experts. Uh, so um, for me, this, this, this whole point as to uh, which, which, which language to prioritize, uh, I think it's a difficult, it's a difficult uh, political decision. But uh, I think uh, existentially, it's in, in, in that I, I uh, find it uh, very, uh, I find Hindustani a, a, a very strong uh, resource. Uh, I don't know whether I've answered your question. No, Ma'am, uh, I'm not asking any question. I'm just trying to solve a few queries of mine. And apart from uh, my queries, I'm also taking some queries that uh, Hindi was, Hindi is, in fact, her mother tongue and English is father tongue. So what is your understanding of the impact of mother tongue influence in writing? Actually, you know, I do. I've been doing workshops uh, for young people for more than 25 years and ask each of them. Like sometimes I have people in a class. Some some people are from Assam, some from Tamil Nadu, some from Bengal. And, you know, so they are. So I ask them, what is your mother tongue? And what did you uh, hear your parents speak? or your, uh, what was the first song that you remember in your mother tongue? And then they actually sing it out. Then I ask them to write something in their mother tongue and then to write in English. Thus, uh, 
does um, art precede life or does life precede art? You know, there's even that question. So when talking about the mother tongue, this, it's actually very complex. It's such a difficult question to answer because each poet, each writer has different stirrings of creativity. And uh, the mother tongue influence, of course, is something which we are discussing academically. But um, I mean, the question which I want to ask ultimately, maybe you don't want to discuss it right now, is that when we write in a second language, is writing in a second language ultimately at some level a work of translation? You know, but, but there is a lot that goes before this. So if I have, uh, if uh, I can say I, there are some, because I myself am not a philosopher of, uh, or, uh, or in 1939, she is a feminist writer and um, she speaks about tropisms. She's borrowed this word from plant biology. Tropisms means um, the stimuli to growth, but in the human sense, it can be taken to mean what she says is the is the movements, the tiny movements of um, that proceed and prepare our thoughts. I believe now we are audible and visible to all the attendees. So, Madam, we were in the conversation of creativity or creativity comes like anything. What is your opinion, Madam? Yeah, uh, I think it's an, uh, am I audible? Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, you are audible, ma'am, yeah. please go. First of all, you know, uh, gone on to become very, very uh, well-known writers. Well -known. You know, uh, there are so many. There is uh, uh, my favorite, the shipping news, Annie uh, Pro. There is uh, uh, Raymond Chandler. Now, they, they published after 50. So, uh, we tend to prioritize youth, spontaneity, along with glamour, uh, a little more than we did before. The whole thing about uh, this, you know, celebrity writers, uh, you know, the cult of celebrity writers, which came in, say, uh, some 50, even say in the last 50 years or so, even, even, even uh, you know, even goes back uh, a few, uh, 30 to, uh, you know, 20 or 30 years, there was that kind of prioritization of uh, experience and wisdom in writing. And um, what is happening, it's not as though I'm saying that one needs to be like, you know, have many, many gray hairs in order to uh, write a good novel. But uh, what I'm trying to say is that uh, along with prioritizing a kind of freshness and spontaneity, we also need to look at wisdom. We also need to look at, you know, experience and they might, uh, you know, the maturity as, as it were to write it. So I would say that creativity really would, it, it can happen at any age, but the manifestation of it would be different from, uh, you know, for a young person and for an older person. With Anuradha, I agree with Anuradha that you can write at any age and that celebrity writing. But I think that is not to do with literature, really. All this celebrity writing is not something which is really to do with literature. You know, so you can write at 50, you can write at 60 or 70 or whatever. But I also believe that when you're young, you're so much more calculable. Things don't hurt you so much. Things don't touch you so much as when you're young. And uh, therefore, uh, I feel that if you have to become a writer, because what happens is to be uh, to, to be sensitive is also kind of training. To be insensitive is also a training. And like Anuradha said, it's civilizational. It's cultural. You know that when you're taught, sensitized to relationships and to nature. Uh, so if you're sensitized when you're young, then you can continue to write when you are older, maybe not with the same sensitivity, but with a different, with different kind of sensibilities, I would say. And of course, wisdom, 
wisdom is there, but uh, wisdom can be there in young people. I believe uh, the circumstances and the feelings, emotions play a very important role when we talk about writing anything. I remember like somebody has asked uh, me, how do you write? So uh, I will share my Hindi lines here. Meet tumse bichhadkar. Meet tumse bichhadkar nayan. Barbas sajal ho gaye. Meet to pay. It, became, it become the guzzle. So my understanding is that the writing or the creative writing comes uh, not with the age, but with the experience with the uh, compulsion of the circumstances also. So, uh, and emotion, how much, how feeling yeah. you are, how sensitive you yeah. are. So, not Immediately. It takes you to that longing for the beloved. It takes you to, to, to that, to that, to that uh, emotion, you know, to that power of that emotion, uh, which, which, uh, which really moves poetry, which makes it uh, what it is. So, uh, I, I, I longing that is suggested by the tears turning into words. So uh, that's that that's the way po uh, creativity functions as far as poetry is concerned by suggesting it by just just with an image and there you have the entire emotion the the, the, the emotion that you've been living with for you know uh, many many maybe many days many years and there it is. Anuradha and uh, Dr. Shavan that uh, it is desire, the sense of loss, which is fulfilled by creative output, either as song, as, you know, a poetry or as music, compose, composers of music. What do you think? Shavan, would you like to answer before I do? <laughs> First you answer, ma'am. After you, ma'am. After you. You. After you, ma'am. You spoke of loss. Our own imagination. So definitely. It provides a platform to write or to come up with new ideas. That is what I understand with the longingness and the fineness of any emotion. Anwatha, ma'am. Yeah, I would, uh, uh, Mariam, completely agree that, uh, uh, it, yes, to me, writing is desire. It is, it is, it is that desire to... Immediate loss. It's a sense of loss in Lacanian terms of the separation from the original separation from the real and entry into the symbolic. You see, because Jacques Lacan says that the moment you enter language, you enter definitely, irrevocably, you are se separated from the real. Because to express the real, your own reality, you use language and language you're already once removed. That is why it not being our mother tongue, um, we are in a sense translating ourselves, our realities into a language which is not our own. You know, uh, Maria, it's very uh, interesting, it's very fascinating. Yeah, well, Maria ma'am, I, I just understand, I just remember one thing like idioms and metaphors are important to enrich any creative writing. Fine. Should writers yes. in English for whom, like for uh, metaphors from the native or the second language? Okay, I, I'd like to refer to Julia Kristeva, who takes off from Lacan, and when she talks about uh, the lang about language, uh, and uh, you know, when we talk about the ordered world that uh, the symbolic world that language represents, um, Kristeva's um, you know uh, theorization talks about an ex before being born. So, um, before birth would, on the neonatal uh, stage. Yeah. So, I would rather, you know, I would not make this kind of a standoff between, you know, first language and second language, but more between, uh, you know, the standard language and the experimental language. You know, I, I would rather go there. And I think when we are when we are writing this this ordered world you know the standard language and especially as writers as indian writers of english that is what we are interrogating you know we are experimenting with language you know we are we are constantly breaking the order you know the the the, the order that is imposed in that sense by the what i was coming to so, I, th I think that's uh, what know, he says. yeah so the idioms and metaphors that you talked about then you know form a really uh, very very important uh, 
play a very important role in this you know in 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 interrogating the uh, order of the standard language you know it is it is a way of way of breaking it it is a way of challenging it it is a way of inscribing our selfhood uh, into it yeah and and radha ma'am like when you talk about language so uh, you know i remember one of the hindi uh, renowned poet who mentions and i will translate it for the others those who cannot understand hindi who wish to say jo keh sako kaho jariya chahe kuch bhi kuch bhi ho jo keh sako kaho jariya chahe kuch bhi ho zindagi ka kya guzarna hai zindagi guzar jati hai so uh, the writer the poet the hindi poet wants to mention that you know but listen you know, to the what do you do when you are writing you can you can aankhon ki baat kaise ho sakti hai jab insaan likh raha hai to that i understand that aankhon ki baat nahi ho sakti when we write but when we are writing there is some imagination which i saw in others eyes so now can you please uh, shed some light on it because the truth is that we exist in a multi genre society i mean i mean as persons like when we see a film i mean when when you see something you are also creating it in a sense you know when you see a piece of art if i could paint i would paint i used to do illustrations i mean i am not a good artist i am just kind of a semi cartoonist which i did illustrations for my own uh, poems for children but you know creativity is something that you cannot limit you may i may want to write a, and i write plays because plays are you know they there are different like anuradha also writes plays so there are different form of expression so we can express ourselves in any way of course it's not considered very um, very savvy to do such things but then you can't help it if you want to write in different uh, genres uh, anuradha ma'am what is your opinion for this for the yeah, multi genre completely, and the completely you is mariam because i'm also a uh, somebody who's uh, uh, who's who's always tried various genres um I have I've written a bit of poetry bad poetry let me tell you uh, but uh, a poem or you uh, you you pick up a novel you are you you you're looking you are looking for different things um uh, the image that we just uh, that that you so beautifully gave us just now you know uh, i mean that's what one comes to poetry for you know those 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 two 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 lines which would you know express uh, a whole gamut of emotion you know just suggest that gamut of emotion you and uh, uh, when when is uh, reading fiction i feel 200 200 pages or 300 pages you know uh, they, they they are they're they are moving from uh, you know point a to point b to point c you know and in that sense tracing Uh, a, 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 a development, a, a, you know, making an arc, you know. So that, I think that's it's it's different, you know, when you pick when you when you when you when you pick up a novel. The play, the 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 theater experience, I think it is a it's a far more immediate experience, and it's the immediacy that uh, you know um, that uh, that that attracts me to theater. It is it is it is it is question. When you write a play, is your intent? when you say immediacy uh, uh the immediate connection with the audience is there something polemical about uh, when you when you write a play or is it is it the same the intent is the same as when you write a novel like in a novel you said we are, we are exploring um uh, we are exploring relationships and we are taking it along a schema till it reach, reaches the denouement you know the the story but um, when when you write a play it's an immediate connection so do you feel that there are certain things you want to print you know uh, the the whole i'm far more conscious of the audience when i am writing a play it's 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 a constant that's right. that's, that's, that's what happens huh? in the audience you know so what are the themes that you what are the themes that you deal with i'm sorry i've not seen any of your plays but um... <laughs> thanks for this question you know i've dealt with uh, you know different kinds of themes uh uh i'll just talk about three very different kinds of plays that i've written um uh, this play called a pipe dream in delhi uh that was uh, about the written my 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 second play i wrote about uh, the relationship between uh, uh, sadat hasan manto and uh, 
uh, Ismat Chupta. Yes, yes. That's called Ismat's love stories. Uh, and uh, this is taking off from their writings about each other. And the, the, the third play that I want to talk about is my adaptation of the Greek play Media, which I also directed. So, you know, and this is in Hindustani, uh, the third one. So, uh, I mean, all the time, you know, especially when I was... Interesting, because my, my musical, children's musical, I don't know if you saw it, it was performed a few years ago in uh, the Habitat Center. It's, wow. uh, it's called A Bag Full of Dreams. It was about these, it was also very influenced by the Nitali murders, because oh. there were these people who used to, who used to catch children and eat them and it's all it's got eight songs in it and wow. uh, so they they have you know when, when these people are saying that oh feed her up feed her up you know the, the kid that they've kidnapped and then he says oh a young bones below scrunch and munch you know so it's like kind of they, they're all songs understand i just want to ask like is language proficiency any language in any language in which you write critical to become creative or the ideas what is more important? Should I? Yeah, yeah, ma'am, please. Um, I tell people who write is that as long as, you know, you're creative in your writing, your language can be edited. Because after all, we have these hordes and hordes of editors who are willing to edit. And I have edited works of people who have not been very proficient in language. And that, you know, jumbled sentences and is very well received. Even used to write on the side of the margins. If you remember studying Amos Tutola, Anuradha. And you know, but, uh, so it's like language is important. And if you can manipulate the, the medium which you are using to communicate, nothing like it. But if you cannot, there are people who would help you. Can't hear anything. Uh, we can't hear you. One on mute. Oh, sorry, 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 sorry. Uh, I muted myself. So, ma'am, what is more important? It is. Uh, yeah, I, I think I would just like to add uh, one point to this that language is at times a political decision for a writer, which language to write in. And we, uh, you know, I was thinking of uh, Gugi Vatiango. Yes, uh, Gugi right. Vatiango was right, wrote, uh, started to write in English, be became very well known, and then took this political decision that no more English. I'm only going to write in uh, Gikuyu, you know. Uh, so, so language can be a, you know, a political. Thinking of Jumpa Lahiri suddenly writing in Italian now, you know, and they, uh, she's written the most wonderful mm. book in Italian. Whereabouts, you know? So, there you are, you know. Yeah. So, ma'am, it seems like uh, you know, I'm enjoying your conversation like anything, but you know, time yeah. alarms, and it says that we need to wrap up, we need to wind up, but yeah. we should they do to sustain it that potential uh, writing skills both of you um, anuradha okay uh, i think as uh, parents and educators we need to play a very important role here and uh, one thing is to let them dream let let the young people dream because you know it we, we seem to you know, do not have answers in this real everyday world. So uh, I would, you know, say many educators, get off. <laughs> Let them dream. <laughs> there are many writing retreats now. There are many writing retreats, you know. So people are mentoring young people. I mean, I've done it myself. So, you know, uh, we need mentors. Somebody to read your work. Somebody to tell you about it. Somebody to nurture you. Because that's where they sort of lose out. They think to develop if you expose them to the public. Okay, so ma'am, it, 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 it means that the onus on us, on the teachers, on the facilitators, to mentor the students to keep their potential high and tempo high to write something creative. So, uh, my two more uh, last questions, and uh, I want brief answers because. Sun so one by one, ma'am. Any one of you? <laughs> what kind of problems? Like, go ahead. Rather you go ahead. I've got to hold this thing. Up. Well, I mean, there's a lit there's so many problems, <laughs> so many oh. obstacles. Earlier, there were only publishers. Uh, there was the yes, there was that whole. Inter uh, there was the uh, literary establishment, the reviewers, etc. So 
ultimately worth it because okay. uh, <laughs> you know, it's 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 kind of ultimately you do 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 get your rewards from your uh, readers okay yeah, yeah, any, any response to your side it's just something you have to go through i think and it's not easy at all and especially okay. if you're a non mainstream writer anything from your side any suggestion from your side anuradha ma'am any suggestion for making me or others creative any suggestion i think shravan you need no advice <laughs> that wonderful <laughs> poem of yours yeah. <laughs> and other poems that i know of um i suppose i would just say Let's do it yeah okay so thank you ma'am thank you anuradha ma'am thank you mariam ma'am oh, and for so bringing much. out two or three important issues like reading listening so as india uh, eltai's uh, reading movement india reads i think we are on the same uh, right track to bring more creative writers for our india so thank you every, very much for replying my some uh, conference in noida also now the kind of uh, growth that you have had as creative writers and the kind of suggestions that you have given through your conversation that informal chat with shravan so that also uh, makes me feel that how from those last 2 3 years you as writers as creative whether it is coming out in the mother tongue or it is coming out in the other tongue so whichever way it comes out the first thing is that it should come out we should encourage writers to come out with whatever lies embedded and as you said madam mariam the mentor is important if we have a mentor think that for years okay okay that's fine so uh, our budding writers aspiring writers can look up to our creative writers for help and support so uh, the other thing that came up was uh, shattering the norms means uh, constantly breaking the order that is what i think madam anuradha said that you need to say is wine i knew rather than saying that yes i uh, was familiar with the taste of wine so that is how the creative writer would break and bend the things you would know people not know uh, material things so uh, that is where the creative writer's liberty lies and then we also uh, you also talked about emotions and experiences now these come with time as you rightly mentioned their readings so that is another thing that came up through your discussion and it's also not age defined um creativity is not age defined but yes definitely someone who has gained some uh, good amount of experience can move on to become a writer but then writing in fact there is no end to that i remember uh, in my early 20s taking up the path uh, that enthusiasm so that can be channelized accordingly so that is what i think uh, probably came out of our discussion so thank you so much for enlightening us with your experiences and i'm sure that our attendees would have learned a lot personally i have learned a lot and uh, maybe uh, in the next few weeks to come i may share something thank you